This is an intro into ZKPs using a digital signature algorithm called BVS Plus Signatures. And we're basically just going to go through a little bit of, you know, zero knowledge proofs and what's actually the problem, talk about the signature scheme and the artifact we've open sourced around that, and then usage with verifiable credentials and talk a little bit about that spec and the artifact we've open sourced to demonstrate that. What is a zero knowledge proof? It really boils down to a, a technique that enables a prover or someone who is in, in possession of the correct cryptography to prove knowledge of something that's usually like a piece of information without conveying anything other than that fact. And put in the context of things like verifiable credentials, it means you can prove you have a credential that was signed by an issuer and that there were statements in that credential of values X and Y without actually disclosing the signature because the signature is a fixed thing and that's a piece of knowledge in its own right. It can act as a a point of correlation and, and, and several other things. And so that's, that's really what it boils down to in a simple sense. If zero knowledge proofs are the solution, then, then what's the problem? Like we often get ahead of ourselves and technologies and stop to kind of reposition and go, what's the actual problem we're trying to solve? And, and why are zero knowledge proofs the solution? And so to us, it's about achieving selective disclosure and and data minimization and digital interactions that involve information sharing that's the basic set of the problems so the thing that i would point out is zero knowledge proofs are not the only solution to a selective disclosure or data minimization problem and there are solutions out there in the wild today open id connect has made the just time issuance kind of flow quite popular we you dial into the authority on the information and you say, I need this assertion about this user just in time. And you create them on the fly with the information required for that particular interaction. So ODC is a selective disclosure protocol. Um, there's also been other models proposed, which is a trusted witness model, where on the presentation, you get these bound assertions, which are larger information sets, when sometimes you would like to only reveal a portion of the information set on presentation. And one way you can do that is if you have a trusted witness that the subject and holder and verifier trust mutually, you can use them to facilitate the interaction and create the trust for the relying party, but limit the amount of unnecessary information disclosure. And then finally, and this isn't an exhaustive list, this is really just three that we think are, are notable in the eco today. You can employ a cryptographic solution. So one where you lean on tools that are afforded by new cryptographic techniques that enable you to basically break apart a single assertion and derive and selectively disclose proofs of it. And what we would say, or what we would posit is, we think option three, the cryptographic solution is inherently less complex if other properties around that cryptographic solution hold true. Just simply for the fact that if you have less parties to coordinate with in an interaction, less parties that have to be present during the interaction for it to occur, it is a less complicated solution. But like a lot of technology, nothing's zero sum. And traditionally, zero knowledge proofs have come with their own set of notable drawbacks. They're a newer set of cryptography. So whenever you're doing that, you are putting a new piece of cryptography out of there and that has to go through the process of being approved by NIST and um, being vetted correctly, especially for applications involving government and, and others it needs to have the various stamps of approval. Some of the ZKP solutions that have been put to date have introduced new dependencies, new aspects of infrastructure that mean the way that we treat ZKPs is very different to how we treat other digital signatures. And that difference in how they work leads to non-uniform infrastructures, leads to ZKP only assertions, and then all the others. And that bifurcation hurts interop it hurts the ability for people to be able to support this. It, it increases the barrier for entry for vendors. And we, we see it as, as harmful and counter to actually being able to achieve DKPs as a viable solution in an ecosystem. And then lastly, traditionally, ZKPs have had a massive increase in computational effort required to do compute the signatures and the proofs. And that then plays back to the infrastructure case, which is if a normal digital signature algorithm is much easier and much faster and the proofs are much smaller, then 
you can cope with some of the other deficiencies of the approaches around a highly available issuer or a trusted witness model. And those are the things that we kind of weighed up when we were looking at zero knowledge proofs. And so with that, we kind of went in with a set of design goals to our work. We wanted something that was performant, um, compact, something that integrated into existing solutions and something that really truly did lean on the existing standards as much as we possibly could. And so the solution that we've come up with is based on what's called a signature scheme called BBS plus signatures. Under the hood that uses a, a branch of cryptography called peering based cryptography, which is used in various parts of industry today already. There, these links here link out to the draft ATF spec for the definition of the curve and definition of peering based cryptography in general. And most importantly, we refer to these as a self-contained signature and proof. So if you're familiar with some other solutions, some of them require some external piece of information such as a credential definition or, or a set of external public information that must be brought in during the computing of a digital signature or a proof in order to actually use the ZKPs, produce digital signatures and proofs. So on that, in terms of performance on the first point, we think BBS Plus as a signature scheme is, is performant enough. This work goes directly to the Hyperledger URSA project that, and the maintainers there, and, and most notably uh, Mike, who's been doing some work for us on this. It's fantastic work to get this to the point it is, and we believe it can go faster. And as you can see, comparatively to other selective disclosure schemes that are used in this space, we're finally reaching a point where the performance of this signature scheme is getting near that of existing digital signature schemes that don't enable selective disclosure or multi-message signing. On the aspect of, of size and relative proof sizes and element, what we call element sizes, your public keys are now very close to conventional public keys in the sense of EDDSA or, or other keys that are already used in the ecosystem. Your signatures are very close to the size and then your proofs only get larger when the less you reveal from an assertion, which makes sense because essentially what you're doing is when you are deriving a proof where you're only selecting a small piece of information from a larger assertion, that information is still there and you have to prove that it's existence even when you don't want to reveal it. The next point was familiar APIs. Essentially, two days ago, we open sourced a component that does this, and we've actually got a sample in that repository that I can show you guys to in a second. And we wanted to create super simple APIs that look very familiar to anyone who has used any form of digital signature algorithm in, in the past. This artifact is in TypeScript, but a low level component that can be consumed by multiple different languages. And now we're going to move on to how do you actually take this digital signature scheme and apply it into the, the land of verifiable credentials? And so when it comes to verifiable credentials, there is two assertion formats at the moment. In that spec, there's the JWS or JWT version and then linked data proofs. And for a couple of different reasons, BBS plus signatures can be applied into a JWT or JWS ecosystem. We haven't chosen to pursue that work at the moment. We like the features of linked data proofs and so have chosen to build out the demo and functionality required to show that working. So our approach to using JSONLD based VCs, for those that are familiar with some of the other ZKP implementations, they require a, a special credential schema and credential definition. Whereas the approach that we, we have taken is it has the same constraints on schemas and, and vocab as any other JSONLD based VC. It just loads in the term definitions from the from the app context of the JSONLD app context and uses that and uses the same normalization algorithm that's applied in EDDSA signatures. And the only thing we do differently is on the normalized state, rather than signing the whole thing as one, we actually sign the statements individually. And that that's that's the thing that enables us to do selective disclosure. And as a consequence, out of the box, this is completely compatible with the VC data model. It's really been widely used today. But what we get over top is retaining the privacy features and we get to start adding in some of these cool functionality around being able to take this, get this assertion from an issuer and derive infinite number of zero knowledge proofs off it, selectively revealing information from the original assertion. So here's your uh, 
example verifiable credential. So you'll know the only difference between this and the one that you saw in the SVIP, as, uh, as Marcus sort of pointed out, um, this is a BBS. BLS is the curve, BBS is the signature type. The reason we've done that is BBS actually works on any pairing friendly curve. We've built out the ability to do BLS. So this is a BBS BLS signature 2020, and it should look very familiar to those familiar with linked data proofs. The signature is only slightly larger than an 825519 signature. And so obviously the, the thing that is different about this is you need to have some form of syntax to say, I've got this assertion, and I would like only a subset of it. And what we did was we actually looked around and there's this, some fantastic work that's been done by the Jason LD guys at W3C on a spec called Jason LD Frame, which, which is essentially a specification designed to frame an input document. So you can use it to specify how you would like to transform an assertion or a, a document into an output form. And so we've defined an API called Derive Proof and we've defined the syntax, which is just, just, just a JSON-LD frame. So it's already a standard itself. The syntax itself is already standard. And all we basically do is this is an example drive proof. And as you can see here, this is saying, I would like your given name, family name, and gender, only those fields from the credential subject, please. And so that, that is asking that that's a selective disclosure proof that could be supported in Chappie as a query type very easily. And that would enable selective disclosure. And essentially your result is if you pass that into an API called derived proof, this is what you get. And as you can see here, this is um, based off the original assertion. It's still verifiable back to the original issuer. The other information is present in the assertion and the proof is basically proving that fact. So what makes this zero knowledge um, is quite an interesting point. Well, Essentially, the proof is not the original signature. The proof is a value that is generated on a presentation basis. So the signature, which is a correlating identifier in its own regard, is never revealed. Now, in this case, because we have other correlating identifiers present in the reveal, such as the ID, and we're using database subject authentication, that doesn't really change things. But in some other cases, we can employ practices around how we use IDs inside verifiable credentials and how we use subject authentication methods, such as linked data secret-based authentication, which we are working to bring out as well, will reduce to a non-correlated presentation of a VC. Another feature that we've been working on is what's called domain proofs. So when you have a linked secret and you don't have a single identifier for the subject anymore, how does a verifier know that they haven't seen that credential before? How do they know that they haven't actually, you know, they're not being proxied or spoofed? And we believe we've got a technique called a domain proof where we can actually generate a proof that proves link secrets consistency over time. And, and a lot of this was inspired by some interesting work from, I believe it originated from Lavesh and Daniel Hardman, and it was documented in the credential threat model paper that was submitted at RWAP. And then also non-correlating revocation, and then also what we call required revealed statements. So there's always a subset of statements in an assertion that the, because you're breaking an assertion apart into individual statements, in a lot of cases actually, there is the need for the issuer to earmark statements in the original proof saying, you should never be able to derive a proof where these things are not present, such as expiry in a credential. It would be pretty bad in an ecosystem if a holder or subject could just effectively scrub out their expiry on a VC. That's a feature that we are working on. So uh, lastly, JSON LD signatures integration. So those that are familiar with that library, that Digital Bazaar have, that I, I think a lot of people use in the ecosystem to issue VCs, at this point, it's probably better to just do a demo. Drag this across. So this repo is all open source. Um, this is one of the repos that's all open source and I'm just running this sample um, here. And so if I just do uh, yarn demo, which is, which is uh, documented in this sample, you will see, and the only reason this is a little bit slower is because I'm not caching the adjacent LD contexts at the moment. So they're being resolved from the internet. I assure you the signature scheme portion of it is, is very fast. So essentially 
as we demonstrated on the last, um, as was demonstrated on the SVIP initiative, this input document here is a uh, citizenship based verifiable credential. We've extended the context because we need some new terms around BBS Plus. And as you can see, um, the issuer is going to issue this to, did, to this did. Um, and essentially, at this, just to show the just to show the code that's occurring here, essentially we're just calling sign, which is imported from JSON LD signatures, and we're just calling we're just calling uh, sign to create the signed document, which produces the input document with the proof. We then verify that to prove that that assertion is actually valid. We then specify that we would like to generate a selective disclosure proof where we only reveal your given name, family name, and gender. And that's done here. And as you can see, we just call a new API that we intend to, if we can, fold all the way back into JSON-LD signatures as a library. And all that takes in is the signed document that you want to reveal from and the reveal document documenting what you would like to reveal. And then finally, we verify, as you can see, that output assertion that the um, derived proof that results from that is this, and you can see that there's only three statements revealed. And finally, if we then go to verify that, you can see that passing that back into the Verify API yields it as verified. And so that sample is there for people to have a look at. We offer feedback and, uh, and thoughts on it.